Why don't she sit down instead of How is it? About? Even piercing sauce gets stuck in your teeth. You got food, health, warmth. Be grateful for that. I'm gonna stretch my legs. You all right? Good evening. Hello. You going out hunting again soon? Maybe. Well, if I join you, please spare me the lesson, will you? What are you doing, Arthur? I'm only joking with you. Is that what you call a sense of humor? You'll work it out, Dutch. You always do. Hello. But nearly got myself lynched a couple of days ago. How? <laughs> I had been watching this house in town. Rich family lives there. I became convinced, as you do, that the place was full of loot. Of course. <laughs> I know the feeling. Oh, <laughs> it starts to call you that thing in your stomach. Take me. Rob, yeah. <laughs> I want to be in your pocket. Yeah. Silver, gold, all the good things in existence. Uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, I'm watching the house for a few hours, and it's as quiet as a grave. I become convinced it's empty. I ask around, uh, people ain't been seen. So, for some reason, I must be getting sloppy. I just walk right in. Right into a wake. For their dead Uncle McCarby. No. Oh, yes. Oh, what'd you do? I froze. Then, uh, then I, I saw his name, and I became McCarby's best friend they never knew about. Ha, <laughs> ha, ah, Somehow I winged it <laughs> and let them lead me into being McCarby's former gold prospecting friend from back in 76. By the end of the <laughs> evening, we were <laughs> laughing together and crying. It was very sad. He was a lovely man, old McCarby. <laughs> but you still robbed him, huh? You heartless bastard. Oh. Of course I didn't. <laughs> I robbed the priest, but not the family. <laughs> That's okay, then. <laughs> You're a pair of old fools. Gentlemen. Arthur. Hola. Any new leads? I'm working on it. Well, you just let me know. Okay, then. Hey, y'all. How are you? Hi. You seem in a good mood. I do. You all right? Arthur, it is good to see you. You okay, Marybeth? Just great, but I nearly got killed back in town. They caught me robbing from a store, and I ran for my life. You weren't followed here. Arthur Morgan, of course not. Who do you think you're speaking to? Good girl. Okay, well, let's talk more later. 
Okay, then. Hi, Karen. I'll head to uh -huh. city for her tree and all. All my world traveling and roaming around. I spied a fair maiden oh, hey, so lovely. <laughs> Lovely as always. And gently to her I hey. did say, Hey, you won't let me ride Always your ring dang do? <laughs> she pulled up her garment so scared it would soar. <laughs> I you out okay? with old Phoenix yep. went boring for all. I hadn't been boring six inches or more till it all from my auger so freely did pour. She wiggled her ass, looked up, smiled, and said, Bear down on your auger, for I know you struck all. Things went on and on for a week or ten days. My auger machinery got to fire in some ways. <laughs> Save your legs. You'll need them. Everyone's favorite uncle. Hey, well, at least you're a happy drunk. <laughs> Happiness is important, Arthur. Well, I'll leave you to your important work. All right, then. Hosea. Are you gonna join us, Arthur? So, how are you, Mr. Smith? Fine. Well, <laughs> you've been up to much, have you? Not really. <laughs> Read any interesting books recently? No. How's it going? Trying to remain optimistic. Seen any plays? Keep your chin up. No. Ah! Oh, hold still! Pearson yeah, said he's short a little jokes. meat for the hey, pot. Stop it! There he is. Funny. Oh, I disagree. Wow. Now, why are you so afraid of a pair of gelding tongs? <laughs> I thought you were the horse you expert. <laughs> With me? <laughs> what do you reckon, Morgan? I reckon you two are made for each other. <laughs> made for each other? <laughs> I be stuck in the wilderness with you, Charles. I've had more fun Hi. Well, watching the grass grow. Please, go watch Hi. it. All right. You know, someday... You will warm up to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> About time you rested up.
You having a bad day or something? No. Uh, I get it. We'll leave you alone. What is this? Okay, I'll one? catch you later then. Yeah. You good, girl? Hey, have this, girl. Thanks, Arthur. The horses are looking hungry. Don't want the horse's belly aching. Hey. Morning, Arthur. How are things? Good morning, Arthur. Uh, there she oh, is. It can only get better. I know you like a good cup of coffee. Nothing better. Anything dark and bitter suits you just right. Oh, you're in one of those moods. Take it easy. I ain't serious. I don't know why you still play this game. Good morning, Arthur. Hello. Oh, uh, thanks. I'm bored, Arthur. Are there any jobs going? You could get out there and find some leads of your own, you know. Hey. That's not called for. I'm only kidding around. Whatever you say. To carve a country 
for man's desire and not some old world juju. Wasn't that a beautiful fantasia, Arthur? If you say so, Dutch. Such a beautiful dream. So poorly rendered. Huh. How's it going? Yeah. All right, well, yeah. I should be getting on. Fine. Morning. Morning, Arthur. Watch the wind doesn't change. Oh, shut up, Arthur. Wouldn't want that face to freeze. Okay. I'll be cooked myself if I don't move. Mr. Morgan, all good, I hope. Got that moonshine for you. Okay, thanks. I'll make some arrows for you later. Sounds good. Good morning, Arthur. All right. Keep those books full now. I'm trying. You sure ain't any other use to us. I don't want to get into this, please. Take it easy. I'm just needling you. You are a strange man sometimes. Mess with me before my morning coffee and I'll scratch your eyes out. Good to know.
Are you still sulking about losing to me? <laughs> Arthur. Everything, uh, okay? For sure. Hey there. Hey, fellas. You heard from any O'Driscoll's? No, of course not. I've been here with you a lot. Look at that. Ain't it beautiful? Sure, I guess. <laughs> if you like that sort of thing. It's a rainbow, Arthur. Everyone likes rainbows. Maybe there's a pot of gold at the end of it. Or the Blackwater money. Sure, if only.
How's it going? I've been playing a lot. Good. You gonna get up? I'm Morning, sleeping, dude. Arthur. Morning, Arthur. Quit with the rocket. I'm tired. Jose, how are you? A lesser man than me would be gloating over his win, but no. I guess that I am just some tired old Yankee dreamer in a world I no longer understand. That's so. I am starting to think so. I am starting to fear so. Well, I should get back to it. Sure, Arthur. Pearson will be happy. Thank God somebody's doing some work around here. Oh, don't throw your back out like I did. Hey, Uncle. Now, one that sounds sincere. Hello. Is that better? Don't worry, I'm just playing with you. Well, do it with someone else. You okay? Mr. Morgan. How are you doing? <laughs> All right for some. Listen to this passage. It is beautiful. Who well, is a touch? It's Mr. Miller, of course. An essay on the allegory of impotence. So, the seeker of allegorical potency should ask himself, or indeed herself, if potency is not itself too masculine a concern for our sisters to be concerned with, is this. Is it in the seeking that we find, or in the finding that we seek? Ah. While this might seem a pathway towards insanity, it is an important distinction and also a clear one. He who finds things is wise, but he who continues to seek is ever more free. Ever more free, isn't that? The most wonderful idea of all. Well, I guess it is quite 
pretty. Pretty? It's magnificent. My dear, magnificent. Ever more free. That's... That's us. If we keep seeking, we will find freedom. Now you two better get back to work. Go on! What do you think, Arthur? I don't think too much, Dutch. Not about that kind of crap, anyway. Morning. Arthur. Looks like a good book there. Very enjoyable. Well, I'll leave you to it. Whatever you say. Hey there, Tilly. Hey. Thank you, Arthur. <laughs> you all right, old man? <coughs> sure. Good. You know, we've been riding a long time together, haven't we? Sure. When I first met you, I... I used to think you were all stuck up. I know. You told me a fair few times. I did? <clears throat> well, I'm... I'm sorry. No, you ain't. And I don't blame you. I used to think you was one sorry excuse for a man. Well... You've, you've changed your mind since then, right? Absolutely, Bill. We all have. Ain't that so, Arthur? Sure. What is it you called him? Uh, sheep in wolf's clothing. That's it. Is that right? <laughs> well, thanks. Thank you. Don't mention it. You busy, Arthur? Hey, Arthur! What do you want? Uncle told me something about a train. <sighs> what did he say? Mary Beth overheard something about a train full of wealthy folk rolling down through Scarlet Meadows just south of the state border. Yes. You need help with it? I ain't even sure about doing it. Come on. At night, not too guarded, it's perfect. Nah, I ain't thought it through. You know, stopping a train, pain in the ass. Sure, but what if we could force a train to stop? 
<laughs> well, of course. We get a wagon full of something flammable, oil. Put it on the tracks. They see it. They know they either have to stop or die. Ain't no train driver wants to be cooked alive. That is kind of brilliant. Uh, for you. <laughs> and that is a real idea. I think that's the first time you ever had one of them. <laughs> Shut up. You might be the first bastard to ever have half his brains eaten by a wolf and end up more intelligent. So we're doing it? Yeah, well, we're gonna need ammunition, guns, look real frightening, and some dynamite to open up the train. I'll get the supplies. Gotta head into town for Abigail anyway. Don't even ask. You go find us an oil wagon. Yeah, I know just the place. They're always heading into that refinery. There's an old rundown shack just over the border, north of a place called Dewberry Creek. Leave it hidden somewhere near there. <laughs> 